Hey scholars, good to be back with you. And today I want to talk to you about something a little more abstract. I want to talk about science. And we talk about science a lot in the modern world, but I think we miss the most important thing about it most of the time. And that's this. Science is not a buffet. Here's what I mean. You've all been to buffets, right? You have these tables laid out with wonderful, yummy food, and you get to go along and you pick what you like and you don't pick what you don't like. You leave that for other people who do like it. As a rule, I don't like any vegetables that are orange after you cook them. Cook carrots, ugh. Yams, ugh. Sweet potatoes, ugh. Other people like those, so they get to have those and I take the stuff I like. That's a buffet. Science does not work that way. And lots of people, at least implicitly, think it does. You can look at science and go, oh, I don't like that over here, or oh, I don't like that over there. That's not how it works. It is fantastically, profoundly, sublimely interconnected. And when you say that some part of science doesn't suit you, you don't like that, it's not in isolation. By saying that's not true, that effect ripples out everywhere, and that doesn't work. It doesn't work that way. So here's what I mean. I've got an example for you. There. Got this. This is a Samsung S8 Plus that Santa Claus brought me this year. Um, it seems very high-tech now. Later on, this will look hopelessly antiquated. Man, eh, you do what you can. So, turn this thing on. Okay, you can actually uh, use my fingerprint or my... Uh, Turn it on. There, I got the camera on. Okay, look at that. I'm going to go in here and take a picture. Okay, and here's what it looks like. There, that's a picture of the the uh, bookshelf over there with my camera and a bunch of other stuff on it. The the camera I'm using to make this and a bunch of other stuff. This just worked. If I want to send this to my email, I can do. Oh. Hang on. Yeah, I just did. Now it's an email. It's going to be down there in a second. Well, let's think about what just happened for this to work. Okay? Now, start with my cell phone. And take a picture. Okay? Send a picture to email. Alright? That's all I did. Seems pretty simple. Let's think about what science is represented in this. For the cell phone to work, well, let's look at the thing itself. It's really a little computer, right? So let's see. Uh, electronics has to work. And that means that quantum mechanics has to work. Let's see, what else has to work? Material science, sure. Okay, materials have to work. Well, that's got a lot of, lot of uh, quantum mechanics and stuff in, in uh, as well. Mathematics all has to work or else you couldn't design it. This line, this, this list is a very long one. The stuff we need just to make this thing work at all. Okay? It's got computer chips in it. Well, where did they come from? Well, somebody had to mine the silicon, figure out how silicon works, dope it, gallium, gallium arsenide, whatever it is. And then to make it, you had to use these masks that like use x-rays. Okay, all that stuff has to work. So an awful lot of science has to work for this thing to work. Now. How many of these are in the world? Well, at this, right now there's about seven and a half billion people schlepping around this rock um, on Earth, and there's a couple of billion cell phones. The fact that they all work together, they all work in networks, that only works if you can synchronize the networks well enough that everybody's cooperating with everybody else on the network. How do you do that? You need an atomic clock, okay? And you need a bunch of them. Okay, atomic clocks don't work, cell phones don't work. Well, a cell phone will work, but the network won't work. You need atomic clocks. Well, how does an atomic clock work? Well, it uses like the decay or the oscillation, I guess, of uh, an atom, counts that, because that's all a clock really does. It counts something that happens at regular intervals. So quantum mechanics has to work for atomic clocks to work, and if atomic clocks don't work, cell phones don't work. Well, let's see, pictures. If I took a picture, that means electromagnetism has to work. Okay, so EMAG. The lens works, optics works, so electromagnetism has to be right. Now it radioed it to the network, the, uh, the Wi-Fi around here, that went into uh, our computers, our servers, and sent them to my email. So all of EMAG has to work, 
uh, digital logic has to work, lots of other things have to work, and then I get it in my email. Now, what else can I do with my phone? I can figure out where I am. So let's do GPS, let's put that down here. GPS, for that to work, what's GPS? Well, there's the satellites in orbit around the Earth, so orbital mechanics now has to work, which means large swaths of physics now have to work. Um, and what's in a GPS satellite? There's only one, well, two things in it. There's an atomic clock and a transmitter. All a GPS satellite does is say, here's what time it is, here's where I am. Here's what time it is, here's where I am. Here's what time it is, here's where I am. In order to get the right answer out of GPS, General relativity has to be right because originally the software in the GPS system had a software switch in it. You could turn relativity on and off because they couldn't decide whether they needed it or not. Well, it was very quickly decided you need it. So general relativity has to work for this to work. Oh boy, I'm going to run out of board. So without general relativity and atomic clocks, my cell phone doesn't work. I can't figure out where I am. Hmm, all right, well, what else can I do with this thing? Well, the internet lives on... I heard somewhere you can actually make phone calls with these things? Huh, who knew? Um, so there you go. General relativity has to work, GPS works. GPS works because atomic clocks work, because orbital mechanics works. All of Newtonian mechanics has to work. All right, if the rockets that get these things up there work, that means most of chemistry has to work because that's what makes the rockets go up. Um, all kinds of engineering analysis have to work or the rocket won't go up. We have to know all kinds of things about how to formulate alloys, where to get stuff for this to work. Now, for this to be right, those satellites have to know where they are exactly. The Earth is not uniform. Okay? As you fly over like Greenland, Greenland is this giant rock and it's more dense than water, right? Rocks way more than water so they sink. So for this to know where it is exactly, it has to have a pretty good idea of where it is on Earth and what the gravity field looks like. So now we're in the world of, man, I don't know, I don't know enough about it, but I suspect plate tectonics has to be right for this to be right. Well, I know it is because we can use GPS to measure plate tectonics using a system called differential GPS. You see where I'm headed? For this thing to work, all of this stuff has to work. If any one of these things quits working, this quits working. So when somebody says, I don't like radiocarbon dating, I don't believe in it. Well, nobody's asking you to believe in it for some mystical reason. We're asking you to accept this incredibly overwhelming amount of evidence that it has to be right. OK, let's say you don't like radiocarbon dating. Fine, skepticism is good. Skepticism is good. But what part about it don't you like? What part of radioactive decay do you think is wrong? And once you've decided that, how can that part of radioactive decay be wrong, or understanding of it be wrong, and all this other stuff be right? What part of quantum mechanics do you think is wrong? This is probably the most thoroughly proven theory we've ever had. Quantum mechanics is not wrong. It's not complete, but it's not wrong. So if you don't like radiocarbon dating, exactly what part of it don't you like? The problem is, to throw that out throws much of the rest of this stuff out. You don't get to do that. All right? You see where I'm headed here? So when you hear somebody say, well, I don't like, I don't believe in something, nobody is asking you to believe in something for some mystical, you know, faith-based anything. In the world of science, you only believe things because you have a coherent theory that is profoundly supported by observation, period. If you don't have those two things, you don't have science. So it's all interconnected, gang, all right? You don't get to say, oh, I, don't, I want to pick this part, but not that part. When you, when you use part of it, you're using all of it probably, right? Science is very, very, very interconnected. You cannot just pull pieces of it out, because pulling pieces of it out has implications for all the rest. So there you go. I'm sorry, this was a bit of a rant, but this has been building for a while right now. Uh, thank you for your attention. Um, hope this helps, and I'll see you next time.